Hi coders! Welcome to another HTML Canvas game development tutorial. In the previous episode of the series, we built Flappy Bird game from scratch using just plain vanilla JavaScript. Today I will show you how to add any animated sprites and repeat in background. We will also adjust player hitbox to make sure collision detection works well and a couple more things to give our game final polish and make it look nice and clean. By the end of this tutorial, you will be able to take any sprite sheet and create your own unique Flappy Bird game. Don't forget to hit the like button if you like my stuff, subscribe and hit the bell icon if you want to be notified when I release another coding video. I'm already working on the next game. Do you have any requests for games you want to build in this series? Let me know in the comments. Let's start coding. It's time to add some repeat in background. There are many available. The artist I recommended in the beginning of the video sells beautiful original ones for only around $6 each. We will use a free one for this game example. I found this winter platformer game tile set on opengameart.org. So I will download the whole package, but today I will only use the background image. You can see we also have trees and snowman here. We could replace pipes with these obstacles. I will do that when I show you endless runner game where you jump over things, something like a Google Chrome dinosaur game. So I take the background and I saved it in my project folder as a BG PNG. I guess we will write code for repeating background in main.js file. So here on line 68, I create a constant variable called background and I set it to new image. This is how you bring any new image into your canvas project. Then background src will be equal to bg.png because that's how I named the file. For you, the path and the name might be slightly different depending on how you named your background image file and where you placed it within your project folder structure. Another const variable called bg and this will be JavaScript object with some properties. I will draw two backgrounds right next to each other and both will be moving to the left as the game scrolls to the right. As soon as one background moves past the left edge of the screen, it quickly jumps back behind the right edge, so it is ready to slide left again. That's all we have to do here. This technique is commonly used for JavaScript or even CSS image sliders and carousels as well. So in our BG object, I will need x1 variable, which will represent position on the horizontal x-axis for the first background image x2 will be horizontal x position for the second background. I set x2 to canvas width, which will hide it behind the right edge of canvas. y will be vertical position. We always want the background to start from the top edge, so y will always be zero. Width will be canvas width, height will be canvas height. I create a custom function called handle background. Inside if statement, that just checks if bg x1, so x horizontal position of the first background image, is less or equal to minus bg width. If so, bg x1 is equal to bg width. If you look at this line of code, I'm basically saying if background image 1 scrolled all the way to the left, that its entire width is hidden behind the left edge of canvas, quickly move it and hide it behind the right edge of canvas so we can slide it to the left again. If you get confused how bg.width pushes the background behind the right edge, you have to realize it's just a rectangle. And canvas draws rectangles from the top left corner and goes to the right bottom corner coordinate, which is defined by width and height of that rectangle element. So if I set its x to be the right edge of canvas by saying x is equal to canvas width, the background rectangle is drawn from that point to the right. Therefore, it is completely hidden behind the right canvas edge. Else, just move background 1 to the left along the x-axis by the amount of pixels defined in game speed variable. So here the background is just endlessly moving to the left unless it is completely hidden behind the left edge, at which point it jumps behind the right edge and starts moving left again. To show you what we just did, I will call handle background from our animation loop on line 23. I need to place it first because I want obstacles and birds to be drawn on top of the background layer. I made an error. No, sorry, actually I forgot I have to draw the background image. <laughs> so I call ctx draw image built a method which has three versions. I will use the shorter version here where I just give it five arguments. 
First is the image I want to draw, so background, as defined on line 69. And I give it x and y coordinates, where on canvas I want to draw it. And I give it width and height. Looks like I also have to move this code so it's available before animation loop. I just copy all this code and I paste it on line 20. Yes, so you can see the background is being drawn. Now I just need to draw it again, but instead of x1, we will use x2 variable. We created so we have two identical images scrolling next to each other, create an illusion of endless background. I just copy draw image from line 32 and paste it again. And I change x1 to x2. If you run the code, you will see we still have only background 1 showing. That is because x2 is set to canvas width on line 24 and I'm not doing anything with this value yet. I just need to do another if else statement like I did on line 30 for bgx1. So on line 32 I say if bgx2 is less than minus bg width, then bgx2 is equal to bg width. Else bgx2 minus equals game speed. Error somewhere. Oh yeah, I misspelled game speed. JavaScript is case sensitive. If I run the game now, you can see we have both background images scrolling to the left, creating an illusion of endless background. But there is a thin white line where the backgrounds meet. That is because on line 30 and 32, I set x coordinate to background width. But at that point, I also need to account for game speed, which could even change if we choose our game to move faster later on. So the gap would only grow larger. Simple fix is to include game speed variable in both if statements on lines 30 and 32. Also, let's make the game over text white here on line 80. Perfect, we have fully implemented endlessly scrolling background in our game. <laughs> it's time to change that simple rectangle that represents Flappy Bird player character into something more interesting. There are a couple of free Flappy Bird characters available on opengameart.org. If you want more unique sprites for around $6, which I think is an amazing price, you can buy some from the huge collection from the artist I mentioned earlier on their website. Today, we will use this free Flappy Dragon sprite sheet. The sprites come as separate files, so like we did before, we need to rig it and place all the images into one sheet. The easiest way to do it for free is to go to this website www.codeandweb.com slash free dash sprite dash sheet dash packer. Link in the video description. Click clear button to remove the example sprites. Then I open folder where I unpack the dragon images and I just drag and drop them here. We have some settings where I can choose how we want the sprites to be organized on the sprite sheet. I will choose horizontal for this video. Then I just left click on download PNG button here and we have rigged our sprite sheet. I named the sprite sheet dragon.png and I placed it inside the game folder. Now I go to bird.js file where we handle player character and inside the bird class constructor, I adjust width and height to match dimensions of the new sprite sheet. The sprite images are huge, so I'm gonna have to do some scaling down. Let's create new property called original width and set it equal to 941. As we did in previous videos, you can simply calculate width of one frame from your sprite sheet by taking the total width and dividing it by number of images per row. Height of this sprite sheet is 680. Again, check the height of your image if you're using different sprite sheet. Now I set width to be original width divided by 20. Let's scale the original sprite down 20 times. And height will be original height divided by 20 as well. Hmm, what now? There's an error. Bear with me a second, please. Original width is not defined because... I need to refer to it as this dot original width and this dot original height. Nice. So now we have a rectangle that is exactly the same dimensions as one frame from the dragon sprite sheet. 
scale down 20 times. Perfect. We're almost done. <laughs> As we have done many times when animating sprites, we need to use the longest version of Canvas draw image built in method. It expects nine attributes. The first one is the image we wanted to draw. I haven't declared variable for dragon image yet, so all the way up to the top on line one of this file, I create a constant variable called the dragon sprite and I set it to new image. Dragon sprite src is equal to dragon png. For you, the name here can be different depending on how you name your sprite sheet and where you placed it within your project folders. Back to line 34, inside our custom draw method, we are using built-in canvas draw image method. It has three versions. We will use the longest version that expects nine attributes. This is where we animate the sprite sheet. The first attribute is the image we wanted to draw. The next four attributes is rectangular area we want to cut out from the source image. So source X, source Y, source width and source height. We will cut out just one frame at a time. The last four arguments determine where on destination canvas we want to draw that image we have just cut out from the sprite sheet. So destination X, destination Y, destination width and destination height. This method is the single most important thing you need to understand if you want to animate sprites with JavaScript. I explained it in detail before and we will get back to it again. So the area we want to cut out from the original sprite sheet will be 0, 0, bird width, bird height. And the area we want to place it on canvas will be bird x, bird y, bird width and bird height. I did something very wrong here, I need to think. <laughs> Yes, the draw method is on class, but I'm referring to values as bird.x, as if I'm actually calling it from the outside. That's wrong. I need to replace all references to bird with this keyword. That's better. When I comment out the rectangle, I can see we are still not drawing the dragon. Still, there's a mistake somewhere. Hmm. These four values determine area which we want to cut out from the original sprite sheet to display only one frame. The original images are very large and we are scaling them down 20 times in this case. So right now I'm cutting out just a very small scale down area from the sprite sheet. I need to replace width and height here with original width and original height values. This will give us exactly one frame from the dragon sprite sheet. As you can see, the red square around the player is the area where we check for collisions. In gaming terms, this is called a hitbox. I actually want to make the dragon larger because the red square will not be visible. I want the hitbox area to match image of dragon as closely as possible so we don't get unexpected collisions in our game. As I said earlier, the longest version of built-in canvas draw image method expects 9 attributes. The last 4 attributes are for x, y, width and height of the rectangular area on destination canvas where the image will be drawn. I can adjust these numbers to scale and move the image however I need. On line 34, inside the draw image method, I will scale width and height by multiplying both by 1.7. Now the dragon is too much to the right from red hitbox rectangle. I will move it to the left by adjusting X coordinate and I will move it up by adjusting Y coordinate. Nice. Now the image matches the hitbox more closely. I can remove the red rectangle now, we don't need it anymore. We are still drawing only the first frame from Dragon Sprite Sheet. There are many ways to cycle through sprites. Since our sprite sheet is just four horizontal images, we can use very simple technique here. In bird.js file inside bird class constructor, I declare a new property called frame x and I set it to zero. I only want the wings to move when we press spacebar and flap method runs. So inside our custom flap method, I create an if statement. If this.framex is more or equal to three, because we have four frames in our sprite sheet, but they are drawn from the top left corner. So the first coordinate will be zero at zero pixels. If frame X is three, set frame X back to zero. So we can cycle through it again by doing else statement else this frame x plus plus. It still doesn't work because I need to make sure draw image method on line 35 dynamically changes source x coordinate. 
which determines area we crop out from the sprite sheet. If you are still confused about draw image canvas method, I explained it in detail in all previous episodes of this series. So if I set x coordinate to this dot frame times this dot width, it will be zero at first, then width times one, width times two, and width times three. Then again starting from zero as frame x variable increases and resets. This will cut out individual frames from Dragon Sprite Sheet. I actually have to use original width, not width, which we scaled down 20 times earlier. What I don't like is that the wings get frozen in random position whenever we release spacebar. I want them to always reset and display frame 1 when we release spacebar. The simplest way to do that is to go to keyup event listener and set bird.framex to 0. Since we don't have any other controls in our game except for spacebar, this is good enough. When we get back to this, to add other features, in the future I will show you a better way to do this. I also think it's flapping the wings too fast. In main.js file we declared a variable called frame and we are increasing it by one every time animation loop runs. So inside flap method on bird class I create else if statement. I will use modulus remainder operator here and I will say only increase frame x variable if the current frame is divisible by 3, so frame modulus 3 triple equals 0. If current frame number is divisible by 3 with 0 remainder, basically I'm saying only increase frame x every 3 frames. I can also try to animate sprite sheet only every 10 frames. Hmm. That's, mm, that's very slow. Let's try to. Let me know what you think about the final game. We could also add more UI elements like options menu or even just the restart game button. We would use sprite sheets for that as well. There are many button UI sets available to make it look nice and professional. I could also add power-ups with extra lives or invincibility. We could add cheats with so-called Konami sequence technique, where you type certain set of characters and something cool happens. Maybe an easter egg appears. I could add ability to shoot obstacles with fire and add enemies. I could create character selection screen where each character you choose has different set of abilities. One is faster, one has more lives, but is larger, so needs to be more careful to avoid pipes. You could trigger next level when you reach certain score. That level would be faster and more difficult, but also it would be in a different world with different background. I can go on and on. <laughs> do you have any creative ideas how we could improve this game? I might do a second part later and show you how to implement some of these features. Is there any other classic game you would like to build with me in this series? Would you prefer Google Chrome Dinosaur game or top-down space shooter? You can tell me in the comments. If you want more HTML Canvas game tutorials, let me know by clicking the like button. And if you want more creative coding, game development and generative art with vanilla JavaScript, check some of my playlists. See you next time.